Okay, we need to clear something up. What's up basketball courts on the other side where all that nothing there? With no gates there to room. No, actually I was on the planning um, committee. We have renovated this park twice okay. since then. Okay. And I'm trying to remember now. None of that was there, that's definite. But after the before the first renovation, we had some benches, those green benches, the green slabs with the concrete base. They were over on this side, right over here, right? And then you had them over in the same. This whole thing was open. And, and I'll tell you why, it was open and the plumbing was bad. In the winter time, I used to ice skate in there. Yeah, when it snowed and, and it froze over, yeah. well, ice skates out. So wait, ice skate, I mean, skate. I've been here, I mean, I was a baby, but I mean, I remember in the 80s. Are you saying those basketball courts wasn't there? No, they weren't there. No. The basketball court was like one on this end and one on this end. On that was it. Yeah. Yeah. It was oh, like, it was just two. It was wasn't cool. like, like it all those now, courts. It was a basketball yeah, there was, like a it hoop, there was a rim. It was a, yeah. a basketball rim hoop here. And then there was one on this side. But that was it. It wasn't all of this. And it, none of that fencing was in there back in that day. No. None of that fencing. Absolutely. What, what, what fencing? Which mean the middle okay, one, right? So, yeah, the middle yeah, yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. They just put that yeah. there. Yeah. And and they used to, well, they didn't really lock the park, but we had holes. But not we. People had holes cut yeah. in the fence. That's why I was telling yeah. you, the big holes. And basically, what happened was they cut the hole in the fence so often they finally just built an entrance. Mm. Because okay. I'm going to date myself, but my mom has pictures of me at age two in fifth, late 50s, early 60s, so we didn't even have high fences. We had them little chain link fences that the oh, project yeah? had. Yeah. We didn't, it, didn't, it wasn't even these big fences. Exactly when the change, the first change came about, okay, I, I can tell you it was in the first, the first renovation mm -hmm. was done in the 80s. Okay. okay. Somewhere after 81, because I went into a city job back then. And I went into okay. that city job in 81, so that's how okay. I remember. And I was president of the Block Association, more the mouthpiece, you know. And um, we went, because like I said, the plumbing was so bad. We used to have a pool on the other side of the Right, park. yeah, I remember that. I remember yeah, that I remember. Right? By the time I came up, it was abandoned, though. It was like an abandoned. Yeah, because the first yeah. year that it was in, it, it lasted. The second year, they ripped, they stole all the plumbing because of the grass, you know? So, I get to blame you for putting that soccer field in there. You said y'all are the planning committee? <laughs> well, the sec this is the second time around. I mm -hmm. wasn't actively involved, mm -hmm. but in the 80s, I was. And like I said, we were responsible for resurfacing, fixing the plumbing in the park, and mm -hmm. they would put new benches and stuff like that. Um, who did the soccer field? Uh, I mean, office, hey, okay? yeah. so community policing was back then when police were mature and intelligent and recognized a peaceful assembly, albeit a little bit on the other side of the law because we were connected to electricity, okay, from the city. But they didn't, everybody was happy. Nobody, they didn't come in like gangbusters and idiots and roust everybody out the park. Right. The sign, park closes at dusk. Do you know that sign has been on that on that fence forever? It was never enforced. Mm. They only recently started, in the last two years is when they started locking this park at night. Yeah, yeah. This park was yeah. never locked. I yeah. got a ticket on this park. Mm. I was just walking from there to go to the subway, to go to Westchester. I got stopped right there and they wrote me up. Yeah. For what? I had to go to court for a trespass. Because under the law, in order for you to be in the park, you're supposed to have, technically, it's in the playground area. In order for you to be an adult in the playground area, you have to have, you have to be accompanied by a child. Right. Okay? Yeah. Right. No, that's always been the law, mm -hmm. but it was never enforced. Now, going through, cutting through, I don't understand. I mean, unless it was after dusk, 
then it's considered trespassing on a technical note. You know? It, it is trespassing. But it just was like it's one of those the letter of the law and 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 you know, the spirit mm -hmm. of the law. It just was something with, that wasn't in, enforced. Because it was peaceful. It was a neighborhood. You see how my neighbors out here barbecue the house? You have people sitting in, in front of every house on the block. Oh yeah? In front of every house what, on the what block. What years would you say this? Like? From the 50s uh -huh. straight through. I mean, as so. As far as I'm concerned, straight up until now. Because my mother, like I said, my well, I wasn't born when they moved here. Right. They moved here in 55, but. Everybody was neighborly. Everybody hung out. You didn't have you didn't have no chain snatches and purse snatches and all of that. Why? Because the biggest deterrent is people that live here with their eyes open on the street without cell phones and video cams. It was still a deterrent to crime. Let me ask you, because you say drugs. Okay, now uh -huh. when we did have we did have a, a period of time in which there were drugs. Okay. Um, actually, they used to sell by the pole. Okay, and this was in the '80s. I grew up here. My kids are raised here. My grandson lives here. So much like I would do right now, being that I grew up here, I knew who was doing what, right? And um, there was a guy named Ralph. Y'all remember Ralph? D. We'll call him D. Ralph D. When I graduated from the police academy, mm -hmm. that day he was out here, and within 30 seconds of him seeing me in uniform, the whole project knew <laughs> that I had become a police officer. Mm -hmm. So I didn't change, but I lived here. So with that having been said, there were certain things that I just couldn't stand for where I live. Uh -huh. You know? So that drug dealing shit that was going on right there, that had to go. They went, you know. Um, stuff. It was just, like I said, I'm still here right. because it's still a decent neighborhood. I have people that come here and go, damn, at night. I didn't know it was so quiet over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, it's, it's, but like I said, that was back in the day and it was large assemblies, a lot of fun, loud music. Yes, today they would have a fit with that. You know, you have to have a permit. You have to have a permit to have a basketball tournament. You have to have a permit to have a soccer game. You have to have a permit to do anything, you know. Any gathering of people you gotta have a permit for. You know? And nine times out of ten, like I said, everything here is, is peaceful. Yeah, we were rocking this place before that church came over there. That, that church, church came Before the church, right? There. That's when everything started messing up. Was it really? Yeah, yeah they had a stop it. When they came there, the first they came, they had a tent. They, didn't, they a tent. didn't actually stop it, okay? Because I was a member of the church. But I'm oh, trying okay. to remember. I mean, you, I mean, but I'm trying to remember when y'all came. When we, when okay, when I we remember. Went there, it was no church there. What was None. there? Do you remember what was there? A tent. It was an empty lot. No, it, it was, was it, some. I don't know. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. What was it? That building, that edifice over there, used to be an A and P. And then it became a Volkswagen dealership. Oh yeah, I remember the car dealership. Yeah. yeah okay. Car dealership. Where? A Volkswagen. Yeah, right that that oh, edifice, yeah. that building right there, used to be a Volkswagen dealership. Okay. Wow. And Pastor What's Jones. This in the 60s, 50s. 60s? This had to be 60s, 70s, 60s. You know what? Yeah, now it was I, the 60s. Now yeah. I want to know. 67, 65, maybe down to about 68, 69. And then that, that that dealership moved out because by that time the spades were like really booming around 69, 70. That's when everybody was like getting in the spades, and that was going to 123. Everybody was like, you know, building up to the spade units, you know, filling their units. But I remember the Ghetto Brothers. I used to walk out and text. Text. Wow. Text. Me text. Greg. Mark. My brother, mm -hmm. I used to, we used to walk down Watson Avenue with spade colors to come over to the to the projects here. Yep, I remember that. So the church was to come in here around 68, 67, 68? No. 69? No. Mm -mm. no. 
They, no, they came, came in, in around, around 70? 70, Later 70, than that, right. 70, 70, 74, 75. Yeah, 74, Church 75. Because I remember. You know what, now you're going to make me find, I'm gonna find out tonight exactly when they came. Mm -hmm. They complained, yeah. There was they, complaints. There, there were complaints. Yeah. There were complaints. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Because the, the cops tent, would come and tell us and that the, the church was tent, About yeah. what? Music? The noise. Yeah, yeah, because what happened was, what happened was. But you wasn't a member of the church then when, when that when that. No, was. no, I wasn't. I, the, the pastor, the pastor that founded that church mm -hmm. was Pastor Isaiah Jones. God rest him. He was the man. He was the man of God. His kids and I grew up together. His son, that's the so-called pastor now, wanted to join the gang. Yeah. I remember that too. Yeah. And somebody that. took his coat. <laughs> but he used to lie, test the lie, and tell everybody how he was in the gang. But he was never in the gang. He was never in the gang. Um, Curtis Blow. That's the name we forgot. Curtis was from around here. Come here or be from yeah, around. he was from around here, and Curtis used to come. Matter of fact, this one named his son Curtis behind after Curtis Blow. Who? Oh, who that? The pastor of that church. He is a oh, son yeah? named Curtis. So Curtis Blow was out here. Y'all yes, remember Blow that? Curtis Blow was out here. That's right. That's yeah. right. Absolutely. Yeah. That's right. And he's been, he, well, now this is, I'm talking a long time ago. When my uh -huh. kids were, my daughter's 28, 27. But he had even come to the church like once or twice, you know, just mm. to shout out. Yeah. Now let me ask you, since your family was here since the 50s, tell me how the demographics changed. I mean, from the 50s, it was mostly Caucasian well, on the block, oh, right? Yeah, I told you, my family was, I said second, but actually we were the third black family okay. on, on the block. It was a lady, a single lady that owned 47, a couple of doors from 47. It was a black family, and then my grandfather bought this house. What? At that time, yeah, God bless you, you had Irish, Italian, and Polish were on this block. So you would say like 70, 80% Caucasian, 90% Caucasian? Yeah, 90%. And then, and that was in the 50s and 60s, right? Yeah. And then in the 70s. Okay, so. We bought the house, my grandfather bought the house in 55. Right. Um, trying to remember. Because ironically, I told you, I just came back from Florida, right? Um, the family that was the first Spanish family, uh -huh. because what happened was... Was it a lot of Puerto Ricans here? It wasn't a lot, right, in the 70s. I'm trying to tell you now. I, uh -huh. I can't remember what year. I, got, I just left Maryland. But her family was the first Puerto Rican family to buy a house on this block. Mm. And that happened because the Italian, 1123 was owned by Italians. Okay. And 1121 was owned by Italians. The Italians that owned 21 sold to the fourth black family. The Italians that were in 23, which is the attached house, were so mad that they sold their house in spite to Puerto Ricans. Mm -hmm. That's how the first Puerto Ricans got one. Mm. Okay? Now, whew, you have some of everybody. You have... Well, what about the 70s, when they was throwing these jams out? It was no, mostly, mostly black, it right? It was, no, actually, it was pretty much... Well, it was pretty was much black, house. Hispanic, and Italian. They hung in. I'm saying the whole area, like, the oh, whole area, I'm the saying. Whole, well, it started changing to more black and Hispanic. Right. But even in the projects, these projects, mm. these um, these buildings were a lot of Irish and Italian. Jews. How could I forget that? You're talking Jews. 50s and 60s. Jews. Even into the 70s. You know what destroyed this and all the Grand Concourse and what's that? Co-op City. Mm -hmm. Because when they built Co-op City, they sold it to the seniors. Right. And they were going to make it this pristine place to live, and everything was going to be beautiful. Mm -hmm. Your own shopping centers, your own this, everything was self-contained, self all right? So people started selling their houses 
and burning down buildings on the concourse. This was all part of Bronx history that I learned through life um, in order to move into Co-op City, to buy into Co-op City. That's when you had a lot of um, the Jews and Italians and Irish move out of the project. Mm. You know? yeah. yeah, but through the 70s, like I said, it was pre pre predominantly black and Hispanic. Right. But you're talking, when I say Hispanic back then, it was Puerto Rican. Right. But now you have all different types of Latino right. community over here. Right. All right. Walking the story, yeah, yeah. No, we gonna I get over here. So here. I'm right. telling you guys, like I, and then raised my kids here. What? I mean, really. Right. And then when I worked for the department, I worked in the Bronx my whole career. So that's what I'm saying. I learned a lot of stuff from. That's here. interesting. You turn into police. I want to do a part two follow up with you. <laughs> right now we got to do this hip hop stuff, but I definitely want to do a part two with you. Don't want me to Is that okay? Yeah. I want to know about everything. I want to know about everything. But it was nice meeting you. Thank you. Same here. All right? <laughs> okay. All right.